Hi guys, it's John from RFM Calc, and today I'm talking about BigCommerce. So BigCommerce is a software as a service e-commerce platform, uh, originally launched in 2009 in Australia, and it's gone on from strength to strength since then. They currently power over 60,000 e-commerce stores, I believe, worldwide. Um, and it's currently split into two quite distinct kind of offerings. So you've got the enterprise offering, which is really targeted at some big brands, and they've got some really big brands using BigCommerce. Uh, and then they also have the essentials offering, which is more of a direct comparison to, to standard Shopify and targeting that market. And um, so they've certainly continued to grow. They IPO'd in 2020. And as far as I know, they're uh, doing very well. And um, so they are certainly have less market share than the likes of Shopify or, or Magento or WooCommerce. Uh, but it's still a significant platform, and that's why I wanted to talk about it today, just to explain how it integrates with, with RFM Calc. Because, of course, like any good e-commerce platform, you can integrate into RFM Calc, no problem, and generate wonderful reports, um, as many as you like. So, um, what I've done is I've set up my little um, big commerce demo store here. What I'm going to talk about today is just how to export orders as a CSV from big commerce. Um, we're going to have a deep dive into that CSV to understand all the columns and data you get out of that and how BigCommerce formats that data because every e-commerce platform is slightly different in terms of how it manages that. And then we're going to talk about how to upload that data back into RFM Calc and generate your report so you can get lifetime value, average time between orders, customer cohort analysis, a full RFM analysis, the kind of reports you can't get as standard from BigCommerce but you can get really easily from RFM Calc just by importing the data. So you can see I'm on my uh, dashboard here, which is kind of similar to Shopify when you log in. So you get some basic data and um, you can see I've set up some test products and categories uh, and I've put through a few test orders as well in the past few days um, just to kind of demonstrate this today. Uh, so on the left hand side, you've got your orders, your products, customers and so on and all the setup for the storefront uh, plus more advanced settings. So what we want to do is go to orders. And you can see I've got a list of the orders that are placed here um, as test orders. And then all I'm going to do is just go to export. Now, what's quite interesting here is that uh, BigCommerce actually gives you quite a lot of flexibility in terms of how you export the data. So I'm just going to touch on that as well. So you can see at the top here, there's a line here to select an export template. And so it's set to the default as standard, which comes with BigCommerce. That, that's preset up and native out of the box. But if you want to, you can go to export templates here. You can create a new new one, sorry. And if you go to orders, you can basically go through all the fields uh, that BigCommerce has available. You can untick or tick which ones you want to include, and you can also change the heading uh, for the column. So there's really quite a lot of flexibility there uh, in terms of exporting exactly what you need. Um, obviously, you don't need all these fields for RFM Calc. So if you wanted to go in and create a streamlined um, export format, that would be potentially worthwhile. Um, but I think that's that's really positive, and it's um, it's clear the guys at Big Commerce have kind of thought about this, um, which is more than most e-commerce platforms do. So it's great to have uh, that level of flexibility there. So what I'm going to do though is go back to my orders and export because for today the default format is uh, absolutely fine. So all you have to do is pre-select it to the default export format, uh, and then I'm just going to tick uh, CSV there, which is what we want. You can save it on the server as well later, uh, but because obviously, as you, you've seen, I've only set up a few test orders, uh, pushing it straight to the browser is absolutely fine. So I just click continue here, and then you've got to click another link just to click export. And then it gives you a little progress bar there, and you can see my order file is now ready. So I just click that, and then I can save the file. Simple as that. So I've now saved my file, which I'll talk through in just a second. Just one other little bit I wanted to touch on before I forget as well. As well as exporting all the orders, you can go to your order screen here and just select certain orders to export as well. So you've got an export under the options there as well. So that's, like I say, it comes back to big commas, really having quite a lot of flexibility in terms of how you export orders, which orders you export, um, which is really great to see. So now that I've exported my order file, let's have a little deep dive into what that looks like. So I've got this open here in Excel. Um, so as you can see, there's quite a few fields. I'll run through all of these, um, all the key ones anyway. Um, but just to kind of give you that top level overview of the architecture, the first thing to note is that orders are exported uh, oldest to newest. 
So different e-commerce platforms do this in, in different ways. Uh, Magento exports all this to newest. Shopify exports newest to oldest by default. It doesn't really matter for our firm car. Either option is fine, uh, but it's useful to be aware. Uh, in the first column here, you've got the order ID. In the second column, you've got the customer ID and customer name. So this is interesting here um, and something to really be aware of. So how Big Commerce works is when you get to the checkout, you can either proceed as a guest or you can create an account. All the orders I put through are guest orders, which is why none of them have a customer ID associated or customer name. It still populates the customer email field, which is useful. Uh, but you can see when you're thinking about how to actually use this data, the customer ID isn't really going to be much use um, unless you're forcing login and every customer logs in and has a customer ID. Uh, which isn't the case here. Uh, they're guest orders, so using that as a customer identifier isn't going to work because obviously it's zero for everyone. Um, you've then got the order date. Now, because my store is set up in the UK, it's in uh, UK format, so that's something to be aware of as well. So it goes day, then month, then year. So you can see here, for this date, that's the 12th of November, but actually it could be interpreted as the 11th of December as well if you're in the US, so that's something I'll come back to in terms of making sure we interpret that correctly on RFM Calc. Uh, we've then got the order status, so you've got a few different statuses as possible. Completed is basically when the order's finished, um, and then I left this order as awaiting fulfillment, so that's been paid, uh, but not actually shipped out yet. So there's quite a few statuses that Big Commerce comes with out of the box. You've then got the various different subtotals, uh, including tax and excluding tax. Um, so this doesn't include shipping, uh, but it's just the product cost, X and including tax. And then the tax total, and then you've got the shipping cost, including tax and excluding tax. So you can see for all my orders, I put them through with free shipping. Uh, but if there is a shipping cost, that'll show there. And I think it's worth noting, as you're probably picking up, uh, the default uh, column titles are actually really, really clear. So again, BigCommerce have thought about this. They've made this nice and clear. Um, and again, you can, as I explained earlier, go in and, and create a custom export format and change these if you need to. Obviously, for RFM Calc, you don't. You can just map whatever's there. Uh, but it's you know it, it's one less headache to have nice, clear uh, column titles, I think. Um, so moving forward, you've got various other columns for handling and store credit and, and gift certificates and so on, which aren't uh, relevant for today. You've then got the order total. So this is the same as the subtotal, but including the shipping. So it's, um, but oh, oh, I think minus uh, any um, discount codes as well. So you've got a nice clear order total there, including tax, excluding tax, and uh, the payment method, uh, the total quantity they've ordered, uh, the date it was shipped, the uh, currency for the order, which is useful as well. Um, on Big Commerce, the client can leave, uh, or the customer, I should say, can leave a custom message. So I've just populated a few here, uh, just to demonstrate that. That then feeds through to the CSV. You've then got the billing details in terms of name. Um, so Big Commerce splits the first name and last name, which is useful. Um, company, uh, and then the various address fields, uh, and phone as well, and email. You've then got the shipping uh, details. So even if these are exactly the same, which they are for all the test orders I put through, uh, Big Commerce will still repopulate them in the shipping fields. So it's all the same same fields again, but for shipping. Uh, now this is quite interesting. Um, in this column, product details, you've then got details of all your products. Now. Different e-commerce platforms handle this in different ways. So some platforms like Magento on the default CSV uh, export doesn't export any product data at all. Other platforms like Shopify do export the product data, but what they would do is they would list each product purchase on a separate CSV line or with the same order ID so you can tie it together. Uh, Big Commerce by default just puts it all on one line. And you can kind of understand why, they, why they've done that because this is an order CSV, so you want to be focused um, on that order data line by line. Um, but if you're after product data, it does make it a little bit more difficult to uh, to actually di dissect. Uh, for our firm calc, it's fine because we we're focused all our reports focused on the overall order rather than individual products, so it doesn't make a difference for our firm calc. But it's just useful to know how Big Commerce exports that data. And then finally, we've got a few extra little fields here uh, in terms of the channel. Um, so you can have different channels that uh, go into your, your Big Commerce order list. So, for example, Amazon um, could integrate with Big Commerce, and that would show as a different channel. Uh, but here, obviously, it's all come through the website, so the channel name is just the test store I've set up. Cool. So that's a little bit of a deep dive into the CSV file. Uh, the next thing is to upload this file into RFM Calc. So, going back to where uh, my dashboard here, now I'm just going to go to RFM Calc and create a new test project. So, we'll just call this test big, oh, if I can spell big commerce. Uh, 
there we go now the default project currency is, is gbp which is fine because i've set that up um, for my store uh, to run in pounds um, now for the order date as i mentioned because it's in the european date format and because you could interpret um, those dates either way if i just go back to the file here and uh, for this one here um, obviously that's the 12th of november but if you're looking in the us you might think it's the 11th of december and that's very very important for rfm calc that it's we're putting the correct date in and um, so we're going to force the european date interpretation which will solve that and um, as i mentioned the date ordering in the csv is all this to newest um, but auto is absolutely fine uh, rfm calc will work that out um, and then that's it we've set up our project so next we're going to go into the project and we're going to upload our csv file so there it is this is the raw one so obviously on the excel version i demonstrated i've kind of spread out the columns and things to make it readable uh, but this is the original csv there we go and now we've just got to map the columns so order id if you remember um is order id so as i mentioned i think the um the column headings are quite you know well described on big commerce by default which is good order date as we know is order date currency code uh, there is a currency code column in big commerce so we can select that order currency code order value now you can use the subtotal um, if you want to exclude the shipping um, obviously on all my orders it's free shipping anyway uh, but i'm going to use the order total including tax because that's the most complete figure and it contains everything now the order status column you don't have to uh, include uh, it doesn't really make any difference to the report. All this means is that if you want to exclude certain order statuses, you can. Uh, so for example, if I just wanted to include orders that are completed and therefore have been paid and shipped, uh, then I could exclude awaiting fulfillment. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna select order status, and then I'm just gonna put awaiting fulfillment in there as a status to exclude. Now, you can of course apply many statuses there. You just need to comma separate to them and it's just applied in the help there. Now, customer ID is where we have to be a little bit careful. So if you recall, there is a customer ID column, but because a guest checkout um, will mean that's populated as zero, you don't really want to use that um, unless you're sure all your customers are creating an account and therefore have an ID. Uh, if they're not, the email is really the best one to use. So you'll see, even though the customer email um, is associated with a guest account. It doesn't populate the name and phone, big commas, but it still populates the email as the customer email. So we're pretty safe to use that. If you did want to be extra safe, it's also repopulated down here as the billing email as well, the same email address. But I think we're pretty safe to use customer email. Um, so we'll use that. Uh, again, if you want to exclude particular uh, customer IDs, you can just comma separate them here. And then we've got the customer email column again. Uh, I think for this one, just to be safe, I'll use the billing email just to demonstrate. And then the billing phone for the customer uh, phone number and then customer first name and last name are separated as we know so we've got separate fields for that first name and last name now these fields aren't essential and um, same with the company as well uh, billing company so these fields here and um, from email phone name and, and company aren't essential all these are used for is that when rfm calc generates the report it will generate some tables of data with real customer data in uh, which can be useful to see your top customers and so on. Uh, we'll also, depending on your account plan, generate a full CSV of all your customers uh, with all their key information, purchase data, um, time of last order, estimated time of their next order, and so on, total spend, uh, lifetime value, things like that. Um, and then all this data will be pulled into that CSV um, alongside their, their purchase data. So you can have then a really nice CSV of kind of your customers, their contact details, and their key information, which you can then feed into the, whatever CRM system you want to use. Um, so it's not essential, but obviously big commerce, uh, we can populate that, no problem. Uh, and then we've got custom columns. So depending on your account plan, you can add custom columns here. Um, and what this will do is we'll generate another set of reports around the columns you specify. So things like total spend uh, based on that column, uh, lifetime value, average time between the first and second order, things like that. Um, so you've got a few things in BigCommerce that you can use. Um, one of the most obvious ones that I always demonstrate for every e-commerce platform is uh, payment method, which is if we go back here, we can see, uh, where has it gone? There we go, payment method. So that's a nice easy one to kind of demonstrate a custom column. Uh, what that will do is then generate, like I say, additional reports showing based on the payment method used, if I can find the column, there we go. Um, the lifetime value and so on, the average time to the second order based on the payment method that was used, which can be quite interesting. 
Obviously, with it being a CSV file as well, what you can do uh, before you upload, you can add your own additional columns here and just to generate, um, and that's absolutely fine. So if you want to put more data in the CSV um, and then upload it and then have a, a custom report generated based on those additional custom columns you've, you've added, that's absolutely fine. And that's one of the great things about using a simple format like CSV to import the data. Uh, it gives you that flexibility to do that. Uh, and then I'm just gonna give it a little um, test name here. You can add a description, which will appear on the homepage of the report. If you want to, you don't have to. Uh, there's an option to anonymize customer data. So if you don't want real names and emails appearing in the report, you can anonymize that here, uh, which is fine. That won't affect any of the numeric data, uh, but the option's there if you want it. And then finally, I'm just going to overwrite the default column mappings. Uh, and all that means is next time I schedule a report against this project, all these column headings will be pre-mapped. So I won't have to select them again, which obviously saves a lot of time. And that's it. Simple as that. So that report is now queued. In a couple of minutes, I'll get an email um, saying the report's been generated and I can go in and view all those reports. I'll, I'll talk about those on a, on a future uh, video. Um, but for today, that's pretty much it. So just to summarize, we've spoken today about BigCommerce. We've spoken how to export orders as a CSV file and the different options uh, BigCommerce gives you because it gives you quite a few um, nice custom options for that. We've then taken a deep dive into that CSV file to understand all the column headings and all the data BigCommerce gives you and how it's formatted and the architecture of the file. And then I've just taken you through how to upload that file really easily into RFM Calc and uh, ready to generate reports. So that's it. Like I say, in future videos, I'll take you through those reports that are generated and the data in those. Um, but for today, that's everything. Um, I hope you found the video useful. Thanks for watching. And of course, if you've got any questions, feel free to drop us a line. Thanks very much. Thank you.